Hey guys, welcome back to KFAB TV. Today we've got yet another Brawl deck for you guys to try. This time it's built around one of the coolest legends from Dominaria. She's red and blue. She's going to draw you a whole bunch of cards. It's Joyra, Captain of the Weatherlight. Let's have a look. So our commander is Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. She is a 4 mana legendary human artificer. She's a 3-3 creature, so not that great in terms of a body. But she has incredible game text, and that is that you draw a card whenever you cast a historic spell. Now this deck features a ton of historic spells in the form of cheap artifacts and some legendary creatures. So she can really take advantage of that particular ability. The deck is designed with Jora in mind, so she's going to be drawing lots of cards for you. And if she's allowed to stick around for a turn or two, you will get huge, huge value out of her. Let's have a look at some of the other creatures we've included in the deck to help her out. There are 12 other creatures that we have in this deck, and most of them fill the role of either trying to find us more artifacts, reduce the cost of artifacts, or beat some face. There's a couple of cards in there that also combo really well with Joyra too. So starting from st say from the top, we've got Glintness Crane, Voltaic Servant, we've got Workshop Assistant, Foundry Inspector, Scrap Trawler, and Joyra's Familiar. Now, th these aren't amazing bodies. They're, they're, they're really for their, their in-game text. Uh, you'll find cost reduction. You'll find a little bit of drawing cards or being able to... to uh, kind of recur some of your artifacts that have gone to the graveyard. Next up we've got um, Padim, Console of Innovation. We've got Mishra's Self-Replicator from Dominaria. Mishra's Self-Replicator is a, a really decent decent card in the way that if you untap with this guy and you've got even just a couple of cheap artifacts, you can spawn an army for a relatively cheap cost, you know, if you if you think that you've got a couple of zero cost artifacts or costs that have been reduced to zero with a with this in play, with only three or four mana untapped, you can get insane value out of that. You can get at least three two two creatures just from playing that one artifact. And the cost is really minimal. If you do happen to untap with this guy, like I say, he's great. We've got Neheb for generating all that mana. We've got a great finisher in the form of Locust God. So this naturally combos with Jorah. You're going to be playing artifacts, you're going to be playing uh, a saga also. You're going to be playing um, a few legendaries as well. So this guy's going to be generating a, a good base army for you. And he just happens to filter a card. If you're really stuck for options, if you don't happen to have anything in your hand that you can use. And he returns to your hand if he isn't exiled whenever he dies. We've also got the big guy, Metalwork Colossus. He's huge. Ridiculous how cheap this guy can get. He can really be paid for free. Um, in most cases, you're, you're only playing one or two mana for him. And he recurs, so he's yeah, particularly valuable. And then we've got another finisher in the form of Walking Ballista. This deck does happen to generate uh, decent amounts of mana. You're not, you're not going to go infinite with this deck, but you are going to get some pretty high value mana plays, and this is a great mana sink for that. We've got a few other artifacts in this deck, and the artifacts sort of fall into the categories of generating mana for you, finding lands for you, it's kind of the same thing. You've got a couple of cards that reduce cost, and then we've got a couple of combo pieces as well. So we're playing Mox Amber, Renegade Map, Navigator's Compass, Traveler's Amulet, and a Sorcerer's Spyglass. We've got Treasure Map, which flips into Treasure Cove. We've got Monolith, Power Stone Shard, Orasco Relic, Hierophant's Chalice, Cultivator's Caravan. So most of these cards are there to get some mana up. They happen to combine quite well with the next few cards. Inspiring Statuary, Gilded Lotus, and Paradox Engine. 
It's a paradox engine. You're going to untap all your artifacts whenever you play a spell. Most of the spells you're going to be playing are one-ish mana, sometimes zero, depending on how much cost reduction you can get into play. So you're going to be going to be able to generate a, a big bunch of mana to make some really big plays, draw a bunch of cards, or do some damage, or sink that mana into something like your walking ballista. Also playing a single copy, of course, of <laughs> Azor's Gateway. So Azor's Gateway flips into Sanctum of the Sun. And I think that, that this deck is, is the kind of deck that can focus on flipping this card. It is, it is about making some big mana plays. The more mana you have, the more you're able to play. The more you're able to play means the more you're able to, able to untap once you've got your Paradox Engine out. So th there's definitely a, a, a good reason to go for flipping this card. So we're not playing many instants or sorceries in this deck. And the ones that we do are, are there really just to try and find some of your combo pieces or key cards or to protect those cards. So we're playing a Supreme Will, Commit to Memory, playing Spell Swindle, which will give you a whole bunch of treasure tokens depending on what you happen to counter, Pull from Tomorrow, and War of Invention. So your Worm of Invention and your Pull from Tomorrow are really decent mana sinks. There's a couple of ways of, of getting, uh, you know, protecting your permanence uh, in the way of Supreme Will and Commit to Memory. Memory also happens to refill your hand back up too and recur all of the, all of the cards that have been in your graveyard. It's uh, pretty valuable in this deck, especially if you combine it with a card like uh, Locust God. You're going to get 7-1-1 Flyers just for using Memory. We're playing three Planeswalkers in this deck, starting with Saheli. Saheli is there to really copy a mana rock for you. If she happens to copy anything bigger, that's great. But at a base level, copying a mana rock, especially Power Stone Shard, will give you some pretty good value, especially with a Paradox Engine in play. She also happens to scry a little bit too and just whittle down the opponent with her plus one. And she can, if you happen to get to her ultimate, pop in all your combo pieces from the from the uh, from the library. So she's she's pretty cool. I thought I'd give her a go at least. We're playing a copy of Khan as well. So Khan, again, he's going to get you that card advantage. He's going to going to generate some some cards in hand. He also happens to plonk down some some little dudes, which can get quite big in this deck. There are a lot of artifacts as you've seen already. And we're playing a copy of Chandra as well. So Chandra is a little bit of control. She'll generate some mana for you. She'll also let you play an extra card from the top of your library too. And if you happen to get her ultimate off, well, we've got lots and lots of cheap artifacts. We can just empty our hand basically and defeat, hopefully, more than one of our opponents in one go. This deck only has two enchantments total. Both of them are, are, are role players in this particular deck. The first one is one of the cards I think is a, a real sleeper from the Dominaria set. This will generate some great card filtering card advantage for you and finish a game for you if you have enough artifacts out. The Antiquities War is a saga. Um, chapter 1 and Chapter 2, you look at the top 5 cards of your library, you may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And then chapter three, artifacts you control become artifact creatures with base and base power and toughness five five until the end of turn. So those cards like spell swindle and treasure map that'll generate your treasure tokens and all of those cheap mana rocks that we've got in our deck are going to get massive if we can tick up to chapter three with this antiquities war. It is a great card. It's yeah, your your opponent is going to be able to plan for it, but standard and brawl the environment there isn't that much way of of dealing with this in a punch you, you really have to anticipate dealing with this kind of card as you're building your deck really there aren't just that many answers kind of floating around in people's main decks in my opinion so this is a great finisher for us this is one of the key pieces in terms of finishing a game we also have storm the vault too so same thing with the antiquities war you're going to be able to generate some, some treasure tokens 
it's going to give you more mana just happens to flip into a massive mana generator for you so these two cards kind of combine quite well with most of the other cards we've got on the deck i think there's um, something to be said about trying the antiquities war it is a really cool card in an artifact based deck and you know it's there really to finish games for you we're playing a decent spread of non-basic lands in this deck. We've got Either Hub, Arch of Araska, Inventor Sphere. We've got Scavenger Grounds, Sequestered Stash, and Memorial to Genius. These cards are either going to draw you a card or find an artifact for you. We're also playing some Jewel Lands. We've got Highland Lake, Spy Bluff Canal, and Sulphur Falls. We're also playing good old islands and mountains, of course. So there are definitely a few cards you could consider for the main deck that I haven't included on the deck list at the moment. Cards like the Immortal Sun and Mirage Mirror. Well, these cards would easily replace a couple of the Planeswalkers in the deck. We've also got a, a big combo piece, a big damage when the game output in the form of either Flux Reservoir. This is definitely worth considering. Trophy Mage will always fetch your Mana Rock for you. And you've got cards like Unwind and River's Rebuke, which are kind of there just to control the field a little bit. I think these are definitely worth considering. I've included a deck list in the description below. If any of you guys would like to check out the current build, I'm really happy to take suggestions from you guys about what other cards you'd like to see in the deck or that you think we should be putting in the deck. So please leave a suggestion in the comment section below. Please hit the like button if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back with some more product opening, a few more deck builds and some more gaming content really soon. Thanks once again for tuning in guys and we'll see you on the next video.